Hi, I'm Amanda Taylor, Cooperative Extension Agent in Caldwell County, specializing in fruits and vegetables. We're here today at the Unity Community Garden in Lenore, in downtown Lenore, um, looking at some vegetable gardens uh, that we have here on site. And it's been a very, very wet year so far, and we've seen a lot of problems um, come up in the garden that are related to those that wet um, weather we've been having. So the state uh, Department of Climate has actually um, reported that June was the wettest June that we've had since 1895. So we continue to have rain here in July, um, and we're seeing a lot of issues in the garden, especially diseases that are um, popping up because of all the, the wetness and all the dampness um, and the, the rain that's sitting on the leaves. So I thought we'd come out to the garden today and look at some of those issues that you may be having in your garden as well. So I'm standing next to a raised bed that has some tomatoes and peppers and basil in it. Um, the, to the peppers here, um, you can see some browning um, on the edges of the leaf and some spots on the leaves. Um, and this is actually a bacterial disease. And bacteria really likes uh, wet conditions. When it's hot and it's wet, those are perfect conditions for bacteria to multiply um, and start affecting a plant and affecting leaves. And what you see here on these plants is you see the lower leaves affected the most. Um, and they start spotting first and maybe have some brown around the edges. And then eventually those leaves will drop and fall off. Um, so I've pulled off a leaf here, and you can see the brown spots that we have. Um, and they're not really round, they're actually kind of stop at a vein. And that is characteristic of bacterial diseases. Um, so they're spots that are brown, but they're not really round, and they stop at a vein. Um, so that's how we know it's bacterial. Um, and we don't really have a lot of um, pesticides or, or products to treat bacterial diseases. Um, the main thing here that you could use um, on plants that have bacterial problems um, would be copper, a copper product, um, but mainly this is a product of the weather. And if it does uh, dry out a little bit, you'll start to see this problem kind of stop spreading um, and it won't be so much of an issue. And we're standing in front of a bed of cucumbers right now. Um, and I pulled off a couple leaves because I wanted to show um, some things, some issues that we're having here with the squash. We have some disease issues going on, um, but we also have some insect problems. And if you've ever grown any type of squash in your garden, you probably are familiar with squash bugs. Um, they're one of the most common problems that we have with squash around here. Um, they look kind of like stink bugs. They have a back that's shaped like a shield and they're usually um, a dull gray or brown color. Uh, they do feed on the leaves and um, they'll cause the edges of the leaves to turn brown. Um, and those are squash bugs. And while I couldn't find an adult this morning, I was able to find some eggs. Um, and they're usually laid in clusters. Um, sometimes on the upper side of a leaf, but more often on the lower side of a leaf. And they're usually this metallic, um, kind of coppery colored, um, little tiny eggs. And to me, they usually, they look like um, the little seeds from strawberries. But these are pretty easy to find if you just go out and look in your garden. And if you're having a problem with squash bugs or you've had problems in the past, it's a good idea to go out and look for these eggs. Because if you can find the eggs and get those out of the garden, you're going to prevent those eggs from hatching and having a problem with those adult squash bugs that are going to feed on your leaves. So these, this is what you need to be looking for, are these uh, metallic colored clusters of eggs. And you can simply pull off a whole leaf or you can pull off a part of the leaf. Um, you can squash these eggs, you can put them in the garbage, but the most important thing is to just get them out of the garden. So those are squash bug eggs. And then this little guy here, um, this little yellow fuzzy um, oval shaped insect, it's actually an insect even though it doesn't quite look like it at this point. This is the larva 
of a Mexican bean beetle. Um, usually they feed a lot on bean plants. Um, this happens to be on a squash leaf. Um, but they're this very distinct, fuzzy, um, yellow insect uh, with some black kind of hairs coming off of it. Um, and eventually this will turn into um, an adult bean beetle, um, which will also feed on the leaves. But the larvae are tend, tend to be what do the most damage by feeding on the leaves. Um, so we have one here. Um, like I said, this is the immature stage. So if you see these, you can go ahead and kill them. Um, once you have a problem that becomes, you know, if your plants are really infested and you have a huge problem with them, they're a lot harder to control um, than if you caught the problem early and could get out and um, spray something or use something on your plants. Um, so that's something to look for, especially on your bean plants. This is the Mexican bean beetle. Um, there are some different pesticides you can use for them. There's some natural products um, and there's also some um, synthetic products that are available to treat these Mexican bean beetles. Um, when we talk about using um, a treatment on your plant, something that you're going to spray, it's been very difficult this spring and summer with all this wet weather because it tends to wash off those products that you apply. So if you can use a systemic product, a systemic one is one that will get into the plant and move throughout the leaves. That's going to give you some better control than ones that just sit on top of the leaf and then will get washed off in the rain. Here we have a bean plant that has been affected by the Mexican bean beetle. Here you can see the type of damage that they do. It almost makes the leaves look lacy because um, it eats out a lot of holes um, and eventually you'll see the whole plant just have really lacy leaves and almost no green left um, on the leaves and they'll be brown. And if we're to look on the back side of this leaf, here we have an adult Mexican bean beetle. So you saw the larva before, which was that fuzzy yellow. Um, and here's what it looks like as an adult. So if you have bean plants, you may be seeing both the larva and the adult, which we have here. So this is the type of damage that they cause. So when you see this, you should be able to find those insects and know um, what type of problem that you have. Next to me is a uh, vegetable bed that has some okra, um, some peppers, and tomatoes growing in it. And the tomatoes here, if you can see this, um, the lower leaves are dying off. Um, and we have a lot of yellowing and spotting on the leaves. Um, this, what we have here, is a bacterial problem, but early blight is a fungus um, that we see a lot of. It's probably one of the, the most common disease that we have here on tomatoes. Um, and it does the same type of thing where it starts at the bottom, um, kills the leaves off, um, and eventually can kill the whole plant. But looking at this plant, um, you can see just the top few leaflets are still green. Um, the rest is really yellow and even some completely dead stems here. And if you have this in your garden, um, go ahead and go through and remove all these dead leaves. Um, basically, they're not providing any more um, energy to your plant. They're no longer green. They're really just being sort of another source of inoculum, a source of the problem. So if you want to start to control this problem, you need to get that dead and diseased um, leaves off of the plant, out of the garden, away from the garden, um, and then begin treating your problem. Um, so these tomatoes, um, we have tomato cages on these. Uh, tomato cages are one way of trellising your tomatoes. Your tomatoes should be trellised just because you'll have less disease problems with those. Um, it's easier to harvest them as well. Um, there's several different ways to trellis tomatoes. We have several different ways that are shown here in the, the garden in these different beds. You can use stakes and string. Um, you can also use these tomato cages, which are um, readily available at, at um, most garden centers. And you can also make these at home. Um, but your tomato cages, um, you will get, you'll get fewer tomatoes, but you'll have bigger tomatoes um, compared to staking. Um, so this is one way of trellising your tomatoes and getting them up off the ground. With all these problems that we've mentioned today, there's also many more that are out there. 
Um, squash vine borer is one that we see, and that's an insect that actually bores into the stem of the plant as a worm uh, and basically causes the whole plant to just wilt down, sometimes overnight. And if you dig into that stem, uh, you can find a worm, and you'll usually see some gummy yellow material there on the stem near the base of the ground. So that's one thing, if you're having trouble with your squash, that's usually one of the main um, problems that we have is that squash vine borer. Uh, those are the main issues that we're seeing, um, the bacterial problems, some of the fungal problems, and then some of our insects um, that are starting to take a hold on vegetable gardens. If you have any questions about vegetable gardening, you can always call the Caldwell County Extension Office at 828-757-1290 and we can help you with those problems. Also, if you uh, don't know what to use or how to treat a certain uh, pest problem that you have in your landscape, we can also help you with that. Uh, we're hoping that this season will dry out a little bit um, and we can start getting some um, good yields on our crops. Um, right now, we're also seeing um, plants, tomatoes that aren't really ripening yet, fruit that's not ripening yet, everything's a little bit slower because of the, the cloudy days and the wet weather. So if you have any questions, feel free to call the Caldwell County Extension Office.